Oh man, the joys of classic car ownership. So and there was all that leak I figured out. It was transmission fluid. Last summer I'd plug it up a little. There was a little gap between where the dipstick goes in and the transmission. And I thought I'd I bought some fancy stuff. I thought I'd got that fixed, but I guess not. Although I might, I'm hoping that maybe I just filled it too full and getting it ready for the winter and a little bit leaked out of it. But <laughs> call me an optimist. And then some guy yelled at me because some rags that I was using blew away in the wind and went on his property. Fun, fun, fun. And now I'm, I'm being reminded of all the little, for the first five minutes I was just ecstatic this thing started I had it out now I'm being remember I'm reminded of all the little things I left and didn't finish last year that I left for this year and wish that I'd done last year like the seat doesn't latch quite right it takes uh, if I start off too fast it slides back but okay I'm not gonna say it's a fiat because this car is perfect and I'm also gonna say <laughs> whatever I say about it bad it's I can say because it it's mine it's like a father about his child <laughs> um, it's perfect no more complaining. Um, when I was eight, well, 16, I was as crazy about cars as I was now. I'm now. Even more, I guess, because I was getting my license. I can't say I had great taste. The first car I fell in love with was in 1981 when the Ford Escort came out. There was a car show in town. I went and saw it. Something about the world car. Like, ooh, world. Must be good if it's a world car. Um, I wanted one. I bugged my parents. We grew up having weird cars, and at that time I didn't appreciate it, like being the only family on the block with a Pacer or a Vega. More on that in another video. Um, so, but when I turned 16, I wanted a car, and I had college money saved up. My parents were like, new, new, new. Um, they went away though, I was 16, so I was old enough to stay home alone, so they went away one summer for a couple weeks on vacation, and there I was with my college money, and I saw a car just, I wish this was it, I saw a car just like this for sale outside of town. I got my college money, my parents were naive enough to leave it in my name, and went and bought it. I had it for one glorious day. I, cruised Main Street with my friends. I had three girls in the back seat there, my friend in the dry, in the passenger seat. The most wonderful time cruising I'd ever had. My very first car and everyone thought it was cool and I thought it was cool and I thought this was, I don't know, the start of things. So the next day, got my car out, called my best friend Jeremy, off to the neighboring town to go swimming in a lake. and. We were going, going, I was driving, looking at the buttons on the dash here. It was a new car, remember? And I didn't know what these ones did. So I was driving along on a hill, poking at those. Jeremy was poking at those. Came over the hill, there was a car trying to turn left and smack my Fiat right into the rear of like a 1970 Buick station wagon. The Fiat went right under and the station wagon flew forward. No insurance, because I was 16 and dumb, and I just bought that car the day before. Fiat totaled. Someone got whiplash in the other car. A bad experience all around. Luckily, no one was seriously hurt, and I ended up dating the girl that was in the f car in front of us for a while. It wasn't a match made in heaven, <laughs> given the circumstances of how we met, and she was always scared to ride with me. But ever since... I mean, that was the end of that Fiat, but ever since, despite all the other cars I've had, by, despite a 1936 Packard, despite a, a Peugeot Cabriolet, one of ten, despite a Lamborghini Countach, I've always wanted a Fiat. I guess I got a little distracted in there with, with getting a little big for my britches with those cars that were too fancy and weren't as fun as I thought they'd be. But, finally, after... Some life lessons, some stupid mistakes, coming, bringing myself back down to, down to size. I realized I did my car hobby, obsession, my girl calls it, girlfriend calls it, hadn't gone away. And what I really love are inexpensive, fun cars. And this was my first love in, as far as cars go. I won't talk about my first loves in girls, but this was my first car love and I dreamed of it. And I started searching Craigslist and I found this one a couple years ago. Beautiful. It's in my girlfriend's name. It's really her car. Um, she doesn't like it quite as much as me, but um, I consider it hers, ours. Um, and uh, I found it 
for a wonderful deal. These have never been the most expensive cars. You know, between five and ten thousand dollars for a good condition babied car like this. Mine has 72,000 miles, all stock, all original, which is how I like it. Uh, well, I won't keep bragging about the deals, but let's say, let's say, no, I don't even want, okay, I got it for a thousand bucks. Thousand bucks. The guy was asking 2,500. Russian guy, it seems like, I lived in Russia for a long time. I'm not Russian, but all the one ads, I, there must be something telepathic or something. All the one ads I respond to are Russians. He had bought it. Young guy, he had bought it. He was going to drop a V8 in the front and really soup it up and make something that Fiat never intended. Uh, and he realized, I don't know, that it was more trouble maybe than it's worth. So he so he, he just wanted to get rid of it. And now I'm going to take it for a drive. Got about 20 miles to go. I picked the cheapest storage facility I could find that was way out in the middle of nowhere. Um, oh, once I switched out the, the, the air cleaner, it drove like a dream. And it sounds nice too. So like an all new car. Um, you should have heard it with the emissions, emissions crap on there. That those who know Fiat's know that that poor, that poor carburetor that was on there was so smogged up, had all these wire, wire tubes coming out. And I put in a new intake manifold. They sell those as kits for those who are interested in this car. Um, Fiat has a bad rap, honestly. I don't know. I guess in the day, my grandparents had a Fiat, and my parents did too, back when they were just normal. Um, Fiat had the reputation of fix it again, Tony, needing too much work. I don't know. They were inexpensive cars, but I think I blame the owners as much as the as Fiat. They weren't built to American standards and American taste and American expectations. And so a lot of them just weren't kept up. They needed a little more under the hood stuff than people were used to. Like my grandparents just thought it should run and run and one day ran it out of oil and blamed Fiat for their seized engine. <laughs> um, so for what they were, they were sporty. And the spider, if this were if it weren't if they hadn't sold so many of them, it would be probably worth three times as much. Because it's a really great car. Designed by Pinfrina. Like you look at the lines, which I'll show you later, and most of you probably already know, it's beautiful. Like it could be a Ferrari if it had a different badge and you didn't know better. Um, I mean it could be an Alpha. So Oh, with original wood dash, great handling, spunky, spunky engine. Like that engine, when it came out, was way, way, way ahead of its time. With the dual, with the overhead cams and the the belt in the front, um, it was, you know, 20 years ahead of the competition for the most part, and way ahead of anything in its price range. So if you look at what the MGs and all the, the competing triumphs at the time had it's like night versus day so i like this car you, now you know why it's my favorite it reminds me of being 16 again if only i other things? No. I mean, my Lamborghini Countach wasn't as fun to drive as this. 